Paul says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Now, now watch, I want, I want you to see something. Freedom is what we're after. Freedom is a result of the work of Christ. His work. Okay? His work points back to our freedom. His work, Christ has set us free, that is the gospel. That's everything we've defined. It is for freedom that we're after that Christ has set us free. He has done his work so that we can have that. Now watch. Then it says, stand firm. Stand firm is our response to the gospel. Now, what does that mean? Is that a, is that a, is that a works? What, what does stand firm mean? In Ephesians 1, Paul says this. Your response to the gospel is, sit down. Sit down. You're, you're adopted. You're chosen. You're redeemed. You're bought. Like, like, like the stand firm is exactly that. Like stand in place. Be strong in the Lord because the work is already done. Now watch this. Our response relates to his work, which relates to our freedom. Did you follow this? Paul says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Do not let. This is an interesting uh, Greek word. Now, this points to our work. And this is a passive present verb. <laughs> Told you you're going to have to put up with me, right? The passive present verb means that this hasn't happened yet. Do not let yourselves be yoked again to the burden of slavery. What he's talking about is circumcision. Do not let yourselves uh, you know, say that you have to add to Jesus. This do not let is passive present meaning. They've not done it yet. But if you move away from, now watch this, if you move away from the work of Jesus that gives us our freedom and you move into your work, now watch this, there are negative words attached to our work, like burdened and slavery. If you rely on your work more than the work of Jesus, there is a burden and there is a slavery. Now, there's also this word yoke. What is that? It's an agrarian term in the first century that you put this wooden thing on the backs of two oxen, and then you plowed a field. Now, the ancient rabbis said, it is good to be yoked to the law. 615 ding-dang laws. The Pharisees, the rabbis said, it is good to be yoked to the law. Paul is saying, it is not good to be yoked to the law. Like, if you lean into the law, now listen, why would we do that? Why would we let ourselves? This, this word, this passive present verb, do not let yourself, it is this drifting word. It is this, you haven't done this yet, but you have a tendency to drift this direction. Why haven't we drift back to the law? Class. Comfortable. Why else? Well, why, do we, why do we go back to rules and regulations? Control. Been there before. We know what to do, right? It's comfortable. Paul goes, that is a yoke. If you're yoked to the law, listen, there's so many motivations. It could be fear. I'm going I'm to do the law because I fear there's a, there's a wrath of God that he may zap me. I may do the law because I want to get stuff from God so you're treating him like a little G-God and it's really about you, this pagan worship, Paul says. It may, it may be based on motivations. I'll do, this, do that to get some accolades from you all or from him, maybe to appease him. He goes, look, any work that you do that's, that's besides or addition to Jesus' work. It's a burden and it's slavery and it's a yoke. Jesus said, listen, why don't you take my yoke? Anybody remember what he said about this? My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Listen, why don't you lean into my work because your work, do not let the stuff that we drift into has, has words like burden and slavery. Now look at verse 2. He says, mark my words. I, now see the exclamation point? That, that should give you indication of how adamant Paul is being. Mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves, there it is again, there is our work. If you let yourselves be circumcised, if you add to Jesus, then watch this, Christ will be of no value to you. His work, if you go into your work, his work has no value. Do you see this? He says, again I declare, in the Greek, that word literally means I protest. So it means that Paul was the first Protestant in the Bible. Again I declare, I protest, to every man who lets himself, there it is again, passive present, you have, you have a tendency to drift. 
Like you're trying to do your own work. Now, you haven't done this yet, but if you do, if you do, again, I protest to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated, there's another negative word attached to our work, to obey the whole law. Now, what he's saying is, all right, you've experienced that, that, that nobody can do the law, but, but if you're going to try, then obey the whole deal, knowing that it doesn't work. Knowing that there's words like burden and slavery and obligation. He says, you who are trying to be justified, that is our work. Now, we've talked about justification. Justification means that in, in, in God's eyes, we are holy and blameless. If you try to get yourself to be holy and blameless in the sight of God, it will not work. It is only the blood of Jesus through him that God looks at my friend Bill and goes, because he's covered in Jesus, now when I look at Bill, I see my son. That's justification. Justification is God changed his mind about us, right? He's, he's changed his perspective on us. Why? Because he's covered in my son and I see my son. You can't do that work, Bill. But if you try, if you try to justify yourself, now watch this. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. Now, this is his work. And that word alienated is a bloody severing. It's as bloody as circumcision. If you lean into your work, you are cutting off the work of Jesus in your life. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. Now watch this. You have fallen from grace. Think we should talk about that? Do you understand that people have died on those words? You have fallen from grace. Do you understand wars have been started on those, those words? Do you understand churches have split and divided and denominations formed based on those words? Anybody know why? If you're trying to, be, if you're trying to justify yourself and you're alienated from the work of Jesus, then you have fallen away from grace. Anybody know why that phrase is so so volatile the question is can you lose your salvation okay and again people have killed each other on that yes you can you lose your salvation no you can't lose your salvation we're going to start a new church and we'll screw you you know just awful stuff to the bride of Christ right so what is Paul saying listen you have, you have to mesh scripture with scripture Paul told the Romans there's nothing that will ever separate you from, separate you from Jesus you know, not height, nor death, nor sin, nor death. Nothing that will ever separate you from the love of Christ. Is he talking about a separation, a losing your salvation? And I would tell you, no. No. Because he's dealing with Galatians who Jesus has, he's already accepted them, but he's going, but look, but look, now you're trying to add stuff to your salvation and you're about to lose your freedom. When he's talking about falling away from grace, I think he's talking about losing a life filled with grace. I think he's talking about losing your freedom. John MacArthur says you can reject the grace of sanctification without rejecting the grace of justification. That, that was really churchy. <laughs> I, I apologize. Do you understand what that means? You can reject the grace of sanctification, which is God maturing you, God is growing you, God is doing You can reject that without losing the grace of justification where you stand blameless and holy in his sight because you're saved. Okay? Verse 5, for through the Spirit, that's His work. Again, it's symmetry between His work and our work. For through the Spirit, we eagerly, what's it say? So what is our work? It is to stand. It is to sit down. It is to wait. For through the Spirit, we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. That's His work. That's the character of Jesus inside of us. How many have prayed recently for God to tell you His will? <laughs> so you have the character of Jesus. You've died. Jesus lives through you. He wants you to do His will, but because He's living inside of you, He actually enables you to do His will. How cool is that? That's His work. Verse 6. For in Christ Jesus, that's His work. Watch this. Neither... Circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. That's our work. Okay? And then he says, the only thing that counts... Whoa, wait, wait. So is he about to tell us what to do? The only thing that counts... Yeah, watch, watch, watch. The only thing that counts is this. Faith expressing itself through love. What is faith? Faith is the gospel. Faith is I buried myself... 
The gospel story is a part of me. I live that out. I trust in that. I believe in that. The gospel faith expressing itself through love. What is love? Love becomes our motivation. No longer do I serve. No longer do I go to church. No longer do I give money because I'm fearful of a wrathful God. No, no longer do I do this and not do that because I'm trying to earn my way to heaven. No longer am I, am, I, am I going through the religious motions because I want my little G God to give me stuff. Pagan worship, right? The point here is faith expressing itself through love. So, here's my question. 